Some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but here at Tweet 4 Media, we disagree. He may appear in different guises today, but the values and ideals that make him a gent still stand. Gentlemen, aspiring gentlemen, and of course, our partners that hold us down. I'm Ron Grant. Welcome back to Season 5 of The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, a show that is poised to help guide modern-day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. Now don't worry, it doesn't always involve suits and bow ties, but raw, real-life lessons that translate to grounded, community-minded, well-rounded men. Thank you for taking this journey with me. Throughout Season 5, we have been featuring the best and brightest of the Virgin Islands, and of course, we've ventured out the waters. This episode is no different. Kyle Moses hails from the Virgin Islands and is known for blessing us through the gift of music. From a very young age, he has had an interest in music because it gave him freedom to express himself. Having been born and raised in the church, Kyle was exposed to church hymns and later joined the drum corps. In 2010, Kyle fell in love with the violin and learned independently until he sought professional assistance to become classically trained and attain various levels in the Royal School of Music. Kyle enjoys taking his love for violin through various genres such as reggae, R&B, and gospel, just to name a few. Ultimately, Kyle wants to share his love for the violin and introduce it to various communities. He's a husband, father, son, and one of the most talented individuals you ever meet. A true Virgin Islands treasure, in my opinion, and a true distinguished gentleman. We talk music, lessons learned, the next chapter, and the legacy that will live. It's a conversation you don't want to miss. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Gentlemen, it's time to discover that guy experience. We are a product line specifically catering to the men with beards. Our products are 100% natural and handmade right here in the BBI. Butters, oils, and cleansing products all designed to add softeners, shine, and growth to your beard and hair. Visit us at Meraki Hair Clinic or thatguybbi.com and begin your journey as that guy. We are a life-changing experience. That guy hair and beard products. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for sticking with us. As promised, you're watching The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman. We are in Season 5, and I am so honored and excited once again to be featuring one of the most talented Virgin Islanders you'll ever meet. He is a musical genius, and in my opinion, a treasure to us all, the one and only Kyle Moses. Welcome to our platform, and thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank Cheers. you for having me. Mm. So, Kyle, you spoke about... In conversation with us, having been introduced to music at a very, very young age, um, having a love for music. Um, if I'm not mistaken, your dad is also a musician. Yeah, my okay. dad is a musician. So you you fostered a love for music. What did that do for you um, as a child growing up? Um, it helped me with math. Hmm. Would, you, would you believe that music helps with math and other analytical skills in school? Um Hearing him play, because he was a, a guitarist and he mm -hmm. played the piano, I always wondered, um, you know, how do you do that? How you mix melodies and, and rhythms? And he showed me. And he associated with Matt, because he's a Matt guy too. He okay. said, hey, Kyle, everything in life revolves around math. So what I did, I take that math knowledge and I started to do music. I started to play the drums the beats mm -hmm. one and two and three and four you know what i'm saying so um later on i, I got interested in the drum corps mm -hmm. which i played um you know and i i give credit to a bunch of the guys them like trevor sirs and those other guys that introduced me into the drum corps okay um there i was able to express myself fully um we played countless places, countless <laughs> parades. <laughs> and then the government had a parade. Sports days. Uh, the whole nine. The whole nine. Um, until I took it over in 2002, mm -hmm. thereabout. And I just retired about a year ago, um, 2021. Or 2000, yeah, 2021, you I passed retired. The, passed the mantle. I passed on. it on to some brilliant young people that was that will carry it on to the future. Okay. You know? I want to um, talk about the discipline that is music because... In my humble opinion, I don't know. You could correct me if I'm wrong. Were you a product of the 
the then be very high school music program were you in a band and that st- sort of stuff so this is very interesting now um I was not a part of the BVI band, but I had music lessons. And looking back, I wish I was a part of it mm. because children don't know how important that is. Um, I was not really interested at that time <clears throat> in playing music instruments because I already know how to play the drums, like the marching drums. And I thought that done in a music program, at that time, the teachers were too strict. Cause you know you're talking about Mr. Selwood and all those. That was the that was the overall perception. Good. Yeah. So, but now growing up and looking back, you needed that discipline. You needed that discipline to get music right. Because mm-hmm. you're talking about some of the best musicians came out of Absolutely. the band, and that and that is why I asked you because the discipline that came with that has fostered some of the most talented Virgin Islanders. But most importantly, when I look around the territory, you are a part of a musical fraternity. Oh, of course. Um, a, a number of persons um, who contribute, um, whether it is playing for church, Dr. Allison Flax Archer, uh, playing for the Methodist Church, and some playing for various bands. What, it, what does it feel? What does it feel like for you to be a part of that level of musical fraternity? It feels like you're putting a toilet on a map. Okay. It feels like you're making music come from a small island that much people don't know about. When you play with people like Brent Hoyt, mm-hmm. Kamau, and you're talking about people, and even performers like Jugu and Durki from Extreme and all those different guys, even though they sing different genres, they're representing Tertola. They're representing us as a small island, a small community. And people don't realize that Tertola has an extensive, vast musicianship that we all need to embrace more. I feel like we need to get the musicians out and have like a, a big concert, you know what I'm saying? Like a big concert to not to show off anything, but to say, Hey world, this is us. Mm-hmm. This is what we do. I got you. I got you. Know you know what I'm saying? So even though I didn't get a chance, I foregone a chance to be in a band. Yes. What, what I'm doing now, I'm making connections. I'm making connections and networking with people that I know are in the industry. And the good thing about us, um, I would say, if you roll up on somebody, uh, let's say pick somebody, um, Jugu, mm-hmm. and you say, hey, how you do this? You know what I'm saying? He can show you because that's the personality that we fostered here in the community. Not only can he can show you, but he will show you. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you roll up on people like Brent Hoyt or even Alton Barty. Very honest and very willing to share their knowledge. And they, they will share. Uh, Kamau, you have Dale and you have a whole wealth of people that will show you how to do a direct sell, yes, all those yes, guys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you can get close to them and say, hey, how you do this? Show me how to do this. And and that speaks to my next point, because you have a dream of really introducing the violin yeah. to uh, various communities. And one of the things, of course, I like about your choice in instrument is because it's not particularly one that we see mm-hmm. around very much, but yeah. it's quite unique. Uh, tell us about your aim and your desire uh, to to allow that instrument to reach and be introduced to uh, children and, and persons of all ages? The violin has a lot of advantages. It teaches discipline. It teaches balance. It teaches dexterity. You know what I'm saying? It teaches um, you to focus. Because w- what people don't know is that when you play the violin, you're actually doing like multiple stuff. Mm. When I'm holding a violin, I have to hold good posture. So it teaches you to stand up straight. You have to make sure that your hands are cur- curved on the fingerboard. It teaches you a, a multiple of stuff that you don't realize is happening. When you hold your hands up, you're strengthening your whole shoulder. You're, you're focusing your mind because you're not just playing. You're going to make sure your bowing is straight. Mm-hmm. So you're not just playing for playing's sake. You have to make sure that the sound, the intonation is appropriate for what you're doing. And I'll, I'll tell you this <laughs> before I get into when I started out playing violin, man, I used to make the worst sounds. <laughs> I used to make the worst sound. My mom, God rest her soul, mm. she would tell me, it ain't a violin, it's you. Mm. Free your mind. Once you free your mind, because sometimes we look at something and say, hey, that's hard to do. Not knowing that we're we our own barrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. what I want for the community is to show them the love of violin. 
And it's not just classical. You can use violin in anything, man. Any genre. Yeah. Any genre. You can you can bless any genre. Amazing. I, I want to uh, uh, touch on your love and admiration for family. You were a father of two. Mm-hmm. Um, you're a husband as well. What was your foundation like as it pertains to your parents? What was that relationship like that would have allowed you to now be the husband and father that you are? Came from a loving family. Um, two sisters, one brother. I was the youngest one. Okay. Uh, mom and dad gave the everything. Mm-hmm. You know, they would go without to make sure the kids have. Um, my dad was make sure that you know we we realized that God is the one that helped us. Yeah, you know, my mom. My mom was always the huggy one, the huggy mm-hmm. type, affectionate. Yeah, my dad too. You know, but sometimes you know he kind of. You know, now that he's older, he's um, you know, like Remember one time, saying that, yeah. yeah, one time he came from the states and we were by the the dock and he hugged me. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So I came from a, a family with love and and affection. They Good. they always looked out for each other. Even now, in our older age, I'm still the youngest. Mm-hmm. My brother and everyone, they still look out for each other. We have a chat that we just we have a chat that we just crack jokes mm-hmm. in all day. Mm-hmm. So my mom passed on. So it's just my dad and um and we we still tight, close knitted. When you look at your immediate family dynamic, what are some of the lessons that you learned from your family and your siblings that you would like to impart on your uh, son and daughter? Oh, love, hugging. Mm-hmm. Um, letting them know that you love them. Um, let them know that they can come to you for whatever. Um, letting them know that daddy gonna make time for them because with the music you can get you can get busy, busy you, get you can up, get yeah. busy but sometimes you have to put it away and your son wants you to come play violin or your, or your daughter wants you to come do something you have to put that aside for a minute and say hey okay i'm here and the, the unique thing about it is that my wife she's my dj okay yeah she's my dj interesting yeah so if i have like a, a gig to do when she comes with me because nice. She organized the music. She said, hey, this is what we're playing now. Boom, boom, boom. And even when I'm practicing, she's there and she's like, ah, that one a little bit off. You know, mm-hmm, you need to fix mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know? That's so good. That's I, good. So I appreciate that. So she's my DJ um, and she supports me. Beautiful. She supports me. And I support her in, in whatever she's doing. So it's like a support and network. You have to support each other. When we look at the next generation of entertainers, the next generation of creatives, uh, music in of itself is a, a creative industry, right? What would you like young people who are watching and they may not be interested in an instrument, but they may be interested in some form of uh, the musical arena, whether it's on stage talent, what have you, based on your time, having learned and trained and, and, and been classically trained, uh, what would you say to them? Um, who I would are say observing <clears throat> what you do and admiring what you do. Get close to somebody that you, that does that does the same thing. Okay. Get close to somebody that maybe raps. Get close to get a mentor. Mm-hmm. If you get a mentor, you can ask questions. You can say, okay, how about if I do this? And step outside the box. Don't stay inside the box because you might be afraid of what people may think. You know, um, I would say. Don't stop. Don't be afraid of what what might happen. Mm-hmm. Go for what could happen. You know, um, like I said, we have a bunch of entertainers, different age groups. If you notice, those younger bands are coming up, like of over, course. Overdrive and all them and coming up. A lot of energy, a lot of vibe, a lot of, yeah. They're That's bringing, good. They're bringing something fresh and different. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's yeah. really good because yeah. now you see. Next generation. The next generation. Nice. Mm-hmm. The music live on. Back in the days when Lashing Dogs, now it's a race, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. Eh, yeah, them and every, yeah. them and everywhere. You know, and a couple of guys in there, me and them close. Um, you got Jedi, you got Taddy, you got all the man in there that born and raised up in music. And they carrying on the Tatola tradition, the Fungi music. Culture and heritage. You know what I'm saying? So Beautiful. we have a, a wealth of entertainers, a wealth of musicians that should never be afraid to express themselves. Speaking of expressing yourself. Love that. If you can describe to me, if you can put it into words, 
because I've observed you and um, it's almost as if you're having an out of body experience. Oh, yo, right? yo. But if you can, a strange, if you can put it into words for me, what, what is that moment, that aura, that feeling? What is going through your head when you're on stage and you're uh, performing? So let me tell you. Okay, so let me tell you. So before I did violin, I was um, a drum co director. Mm -hmm. And people would often say, yo, Kale, buy the turn into something different, Mr. You turn into like a monster. Because if we have to battle against another drum mm -hmm, core, mm -hmm. I don't fear because I know the cocky side of me can come <laughs> out. Like, who can, who can beat a hard beat? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they impacted that the next leaders, them. Ain't nobody better than us. For real, for real. We've been to many congressaries and parades where we shut down everybody. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because we got guys in there who skilled in in playing drums and skilled in, in making the drums louder. We got guys, we got a wealth of guys in within the drum core who have knowledge on how to make us sound good. So now that was my exciting part of my life. Where I would turn into like an animal mm -hmm. and be like trash talking the whole thing. When I stepped into violin now, I got in tune with my emotional side. Hmm. Where I um it makes me calm, settle, I love it. easy. Um, I played down by the governor house um, a couple of weeks back. And one of the organizers was like, yo, I didn't know you could, you could gain touch with your emotional side. Like, I, I get I'm here, settled. I'm here, like, I'm I don't, here for it, yeah. Like, it's I a don't, different person. Yeah. yeah, like, I don't remember or take into consideration what problems I may have. If I have a bill to pay or if I have some kind of issue... All that stuff don't matter when I play. None of that stuff matter. None of that stuff matter. Nice. What matters is the next note after the note I just play. What gotcha. matters is how I make people feel. You know what I'm saying? What matters is how I make me feel. Because when you listen to the violin, people might think, hey, it's making you sleepy. But no, it's not making you sleepy. It's making you cognizant of your emotions. Understood. Understood. You know what I'm saying? So I want to be in touch with my emotions. I want to be able to say, hey, this is me in the raw state. Love it. Love it. You love know what I'm it. saying? So I'm, I'm happy that you mentioned that and being able to connect um, and being a very vulnerable space. Yeah. Uh, because as an artist, that is what you're essentially doing. No matter what you're doing, the minute you step on a stage or step into a public um, space, you are sharing your gifts and talents with the world. And that can be very vulnerable. But you mentioned something that I thought was interesting. You used the word cocky. But I, I would more observe it as being confidence. Yeah. Uh, confident, sorry. Speak to the confidence that you possess and how that really affects your craft. It, it all surrounds our own. Because um, it could be misinterpreted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People would be like, you know, can you turn to something different? But when you know the work that you put in. Okay the hours that you put in, the money that you invested, mm -hmm. especially with the drum core and this violin thing, you you stay home and you practice while everybody outside having a good time, you home practicing this one song. And then you when you finally got it, like, aha, I got it now. Of course, you'll be confident. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. some people cocky, but you'll be confident. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like I tell you, with the drum core, I was... I want to say cocky, but I know confident mm -hmm. because countless times we don't, they're playing by the um, cruise ship dock. Yes, yes, yes. And back when we first started, people used to call the police to come shut us down. We were so loud. Imagine that though. We were so loud that you could have heard us brand. You ain't be. See cows be. We were so loud. And all because of why we brought kids together that I prefer them being there than anywhere else. But that's interesting though. I, I get, okay, a noise, complaint, whatever, but it was a beautiful sound. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I know people who also looked forward to hearing um, yeah. the drum corps when you guys were practicing. Yeah. It, it brought an energy and a life to it. Yeah. Um, but, I, but on the matter of confidence, though, uh, one of the things that I want to highlight, and I think it's important when it comes to creatives and uh, particularly the music industry, anything that really involves uh, sharing of gifts, if you don't believe in your ability yeah, exactly. and, and your craft, whatever exactly. it may be. It makes it pretty much difficult for the rest of the world to believe you. Yeah. Um, and I think it is important that our young people understand 
and know the difference between, you know, cocky and confidence, but also understand that um, whatever it is, it is important for you to wear it and wear it well. If you so, leave it, then it's it's important. Sometimes your confidence could be railroaded. It could be mm. tossed to the side because we so hang up on what people think. Yeah. What people are going to look at us as, oh, he playing a violin, that's a girl, mm-hmm. that's a girl mm-hmm. thing. Or um, he play, he's singing in a choir or something. Mm-hmm. But once you like to do it, once it makes you feel good inside, it should go right ahead. And we live in such a bubble where we tailor our life around what other people may see us as or think. And that bubble, <laughs> hey, that bubble can't be too big. You don't get, you don't get that bubble that stretch, man. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, like, again, like what you say, you have to feel confidence in yourself mm-hmm. that you know you can do a craft. And if you make a mistake, make your mistake. Learn from your mistake. Yeah, yeah. Learn Except from your mistake. I, 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 I learned something from some other, one of my um, uh, mentors, actually, we were talking the other day. Um, and he essentially said um, that we should easily see and understand when we're failing. Yeah. Um, feel quick, he said. Feel fast. And yeah. what I love about that is it's actually really important because the longer you try to see or convince yourself that you're not failing. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is, whether it's a career, um, a, a job, a, a, a relationship. Um, you're wasting time trying to convince yourself that you're not failing. Let's yeah. fail. Let's yeah. get it out of the way and Learn. figure out what we need yeah. to do to make sure um, that we, we're not making the same mistake again. And that's profound. That's very profound. Feel quick. Because we're afraid to fail. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes when I play, I'll, I'll give you a little secret. Mm-hmm. No. Sometimes when I play, I might hit the right, the right note. But guess what? You don't know that I hit the right note. I agree. Likewise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might think, oh, he added in something there. And back in my mind going, oh, snap. Yeah, because <laughs> the audience you know what um, I'm doesn't know necessarily um, what, you, what you're delivering or what to expect. Um, so the, the, the mistake and the highlighting of a mistake is on you. Yeah. And my dad always said, hey, give your best. Give your best. Whenever you're going out there to do something, whether it's talking playing music, singing, give your best. Give your best. Because then if you give your best and you do make a mistake, you can learn from that and be better than your best. Of course. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's a it's a ticklish, I guess, you know, but we all have to know what we want to do and who we trying to please. You know what I'm saying? Who, I got you. Who we trying to please. Um, for me, with the drum call, I just wanted the kids them to be in a controlled environment because you know how we could be sometimes. Yeah. Safe and controlled. Safe and yeah. gather and everybody. Respect that, yeah. You know how it is to have a bunch of creatives in one spot? That's insane. And yeah. all those kids, all those young people, let mm-hmm. me call me young people, they were creative. Even when I'm home playing my violin, my daughter, um, she would come around and be like, Daddy, try this. Uh, she's a left-hander. Them say left-hander, them different. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, but she'll pick up. She have her own violin too. Matter of fact, everybody in my house have a violin. Interesting. My wife have a violin. My son have a violin. My so daughter have a violin. Play. So I teach them. Nice. Um, but you don't want to force it on them. Agreed. Okay. So you don't want to force your likes on somebody else. But I say, hey, this is what daddy do. I'll come do it. Mm-hmm. Spend some time with me. Yeah, um, nice, nice. Yeah. So. You have to know exactly what you want to do in life to make your life better. I got you. If you want to run track, if you want to play music, do it to the best of your ability. Because at the end of the day, life's so short. Head to the head, head to the gun today. And then you don't want to be laying down in your hospital bed wishing, man, I wish I had to do that. I should have tried it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you know you. what I'm saying? So... For me, my freedom is music. For me, my freedom is my violins. I learn the history about the violin. I, I understand the, the violin. If I have a question, I call up somebody, boom. Because mm-hmm. I don't know everything. Never act as though you know I everything. Willing to learn, yeah. I want to learn. So, you know, people like Dr. Archer. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my first person I dealt with was uh, Carol Carol Valero. She was from Colombia. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. Carol, yeah. You know, Carol put a violin in my hand. She's like, yeah. Because I, I went to her, then I went to Dr. Archer. And now I'm 
immersed in a, a in a, a community of musicians that I can call and act. And I love it for you. <laughs> yeah, I can call and act. You know, what I saying? love it for you, my brother. Yeah, yeah. So I appreciate everybody. Beautiful. I appreciate the entire community. Um, people that receive me, people that call me up and say, "Hey, Kyle, come." Like people that call me like at at home, I'm like, you, you, you could come do a, um, a serenade for my wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or I might be down the road, cool. And they're like, hey, you got your violin in your car? I always have a violin in my car. Good. Uh, right now I have a violin in my car. <laughs> right now there's a violin in my car. And I'm always willing to go and do that because I love it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I absolutely do love it, you know? And I could see that. I could feel you know that. Well, yeah. well, speaking of the violin, because we've done uh, so much of that, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, of course, you are watching season five with the highly talented uh, Mr. Kyle Moses. But most importantly, we're going to also take a look at um, his amazing work and give you the opportunity, if you have yet to be blessed with his talent, uh, to take a look at, at how he does what he does. We'll be right back. The wait is over. CCT Fire is here. Experience ultra fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all new fire blazing, super fast CCT Fire network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services. One-on-one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only. Registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. Welcome back, viewers, and you obviously were able to witness the talent that is Kyle Moses. Kyle, I want to take this opportunity, most importantly, to uh, thank you uh, for being vulnerable enough to share your gifts and talents with us. I am intrigued. Um, I enjoy it. Um, and I, I, I pray you health and longevity in being able to not only share your gift with us, but like you want to do, be able to introduce it to uh, various communities here in the Virgin Islands. So thank you so very much uh, for gracing us on the set of The Art of Distinguished Gentlemen. And uh, we are immensely proud of you. Keep keep doing the damn thing. <laughs> I appreciate you having me. I appreciate you highlighting the young men in the community. This program is a staple in the community. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you, you know, going out, going beyond to say, hey, this is a young man that we have and this is what they're doing. So I appreciate you for having me. I've been watching your shows. I'm not going to stop. Good. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah. Viewers, you are watching The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman Season 5. I am so excited and I want to thank you guys so much for rocking with us. You were chatting up with the one and only Mr. Kyle Moses. If you have not had an opportunity to 
I really receive his talent. I encourage you to take advantage of it. Um, a treasure, a true Virgin Islands treasure. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.